Hello, this is going to be just a set of different videos covering going through this binary bomb, most specifically from this course I've been taking. Big shout out to Xeno Open Security Training 2. And here's the website. This program is basically an executable that has six different phases. Each phase has a particularly specific input that you need to put in or else uh, this bomb will explode. And we'll kind of go through at least the first phase together. I have this notepad up just because reading the small screen on the Win uh, debugger is gonna be harder. So I'll try and like copy and paste, explain some things that I think are important, but also this video and these collection of videos are meant to just go through the process of, uh, for me at least, reverse engineering understanding the thought process and kind of going through um, what's important and how we kind of solved, went through this um, phase. And also just um, in case I've had any credits, because some of these phases are a little bit difficult and I need extra help, uh, I'll, I'll link to other content creators as well. So, so we're just gonna go ahead and start. And the first thing we're going to do is just restart it from the very beginning. And so we have the debugger here. We're going to reload the symbols and have the breakpoint at mate. And then we're just going to go ahead. Now, the very first time you go through this, you're going to kind of be really confused on a lot of the assembly code from the disassembler. Um, but I've come to realize that most times you can just kind of go through and continuously step through the program without really needing to do anything because you want to kind of at least read what's important to the code. So now it's asking for input. And so this is kind of the first input you see. I don't know if you can see it. I don't know if I can make it bigger. It's just asking saying that it's six different phases, so we'll put something in. So I don't know what to fit in. I'm just gonna put this A, 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 A. I'm just gonna keep going. And now from here, I can already see that there is phase one here, phase diffused. So I'm already seeing some parts of this assembler uh, in WinDebugger. I'm also seeing this printf read line. And so the first thing I can see immediately is there's a phase one and then phase uh, diffused along with some other stuff here. And then there was a printf. Uh, there was a uh, read line and then that took our input. And so Instead of focusing too much on the later stuff, we're going to just go ahead and step at least into this one. Or we can just kind of see what happens here. So if we keep going, automatically we see that that was the wrong input. And so we can just restart it and we try again. Uh, reload symbols and continue to step through until we get to the exact same place we were before, where we're reading from the line. And from here, we'll put the same input, just five A's. And then from here, we're going to actually step into this function. And so we wanna have more information on what's inside of this phase one function. And so when we go inside, it's going to have a lot of other information here too. And so without getting too much into the details, let's just keep stepping through until we notice something like this function here. Anytime we see a call, we'll notice that it's calling to some function. So those are kind of the most more important things to take notice. There's going to be a lot of moves. There's going to be a lot of um, putting memory or changing memory. There's going to be a lot of a stack manipulation. But for the most part, anytime that there's a call, we want to kind of really focus on this. It's saying strings not equal. 
and then we have a test EAX EAX. Testing is just end, and then you set the flag bit here, and the EAX is the return value from this. So it's testing the return value from this function. And so jump if equal. So jump if equal. Else um, explode bomb. And so we are noticing already that there. this is probably the big portion of this phase that needs to be done. Because when we go here, we already know that whatever we needed was wrong because we're already going to the explode bomb part. So let's kind of break, let's restart and let's go back to the beginning. And let's look at that section one more time. So going back to where we were. And so a big part of looking at these kind of reverse engineering codes and going through the assembly is kind of being able to not focus too much on so many of the small code parts, but really centering in on this, the main parts like the call to functions or the compare or the jumps. Those things are going to be the parts that really shift the logic of the code itself. And then the small memory registers can kind of give you more details on those bigger portions of jumping or calling those functions. And so we're going to go here and think before we even do anything else, because we're exactly where we want to be inside of this function here on bomb phase, we're thinking, OK, strings not equal. That's making me think that there's two variables, or maybe three, or I don't know. There could be several different variables here, but something is being compared, or some things. We're, we're not very sure at all what what's being compared. And so the most simple thing you could always do when you see a function and you, you kind of can assume that something is happening here without even going through, because you could step through the function itself and continuously step through and go through every single one. Or you can just forego that and look at the, the arguments that are put into this function. And so the arguments that are here for strings not equal, if we're looking, since we were looking at the Windows binary, we are going to focus on the arguments, the, the registers of RCX, RDX, R8, R9, because those are going to give us at least the first four arguments here. And then if there's more, then we might have to go a little bit more further and just see what those are. And so analyzing at least those registers, we can see what is being put into, what is being put into this function call inside because we know that whatever this returns, it's going to affect whether or not it explodes. And so since we're here, we can actually output the ASCII. Now we're going to do that. So output ASCII from memory and WinDBG from the register because we already assumed that it's a string not equal. I didn't assume that I'm going to look at the, the bytes or look at something else like looking, 
between accessible or something like that, I just know that that's probably the best place to go for these arguments. They're probably being put in into ASCII. So if we look at those specific arguments, we notice that the first one is actually our input string. So this was our input that we put in from our variable here up at the top. Now what would be the second argument? And then we actually have this string. I am just a renegade hockey mom. And there's a new line here, but that's not super um, it's important. But we kind of already can assume that those are the most important ones. Because if we go to DRA, it just seems like this is just a garbage value. It doesn't really hold anything in terms of ASCII. And so if we looked at those two, we already can assume that whatever is being put in here would actually be the string of our input variable. Our input and this string, I am just a renegade hockey mom. And so we can already kind of create something like if the string is not equal here, then if the string is not equal, then just return, then explode bomb. And so we're kind of already from this point able to go through and create some semblance of some semblance of a code. And so if we see this here, we have technically two printf statements here. We have a string that reads an input from the read line, put it into our phase one and we're actually comparing that here. If that got compared, then we exit out and we can actually continue to the phase diffused. And so if we tested it, because obviously this doesn't work, we're going to just restart. And just uh, reload our symbols. Breakpoint main, go, uh, continue on, and just um, not worry too much about this. Um, and just uh, for clarity's sake, we're also going to just write through here since we're reversing it. There is some code here that initializes bomb. There is a call to print F here, print F here, and then um, there is, yeah. And so our code kind of looks like this so far that we've had. So it prints out the first message here, message one prints out the second message, message two. And then we're reading from the line. Whatever we read from the line, put it into the phase one. That's our function that we're going to go into. And so if we look here, like we see from here, and so we saw that it printed out the message one. Welcome to our finished little. Uh, bomb, you have six phases. It printed out the second message. 
Now we're going to put in actually this value that we just found. I am just a renegade hockey mom. And we're going to continue on and see. Going back to where we were, strings not equal. We're back at the test EAX EAX. And so we can assume that that was actually the right um, the right logic that we needed. These things needed to be equal. If they weren't equal, then we can just go into this one. Else, we can just skip this logic. So that's kind of like an if statement. And so now we are actually going back to phase diffused and from that one it prints out a message saying that we were able to diffuse it and so just to review a little bit of the important lessons that at least for me that I've learned going through this disassembly process is um, first don't don't focus too much on every single detail. Um, the code can be overwhelming. There's a lot of different assembly logic in terms of the registers, in terms of memory movement, memory management. And so what do you focus on? Focus on calls, focus on jumps, focus on compares, focus on bigger logic um, within your program or within the uh, sequential logic. There are certain things that happen, and from there, you can look carefully at memory, at registers, at specific uh, points, because those points, those memories, those registers are going to highlight uh, what is being called, why, why is logic being there. Just through this example, we're able to understand from that string not equal, we're able to break down, oh, OK, those registers, the arguments, that's how we're able to figure out the logic for this. OK, um, this one was a short one, because the first phase, I think, was not too difficult. But the next phase and phase three will be a little bit longer, because it's going to require a little bit more in-depth detail and analysis. So uh, when I have time, I'll create a video for that. But thank you for watching, and I hope you have a nice one.